Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Director of Football Sabotage with Livorno. So we have played through the summer transfer window, the incomings and outgoings are almost complete. We still have a couple of hours left of the transfer window and I am trying to sort out some loans and stuff but nothing too major. So the majority of business has been concluded. Let's go check it out. So as you can see by the screen we only brought in £45 million in transfer outgoings. Pretty much all of our major players bar one are staying at the club. Ponce never received an offer. Ralevich never received an offer. None of our three main central midfielders, all who had interest during the summer, did not receive any offers from them. The only one in the big, big, big sale was Dimitar Vasilev. £44 million, criminally, criminally underpriced. He's went to Manchester United, our first choice left wing back. This sale has left our first 11 a lot weaker at that left wing back spot. I have replaced him. Uh, it is a downgrade. It is a potential upgrade over the coming years. But for right now, it is quite a significant downgrade as well. But he has joined Manchester United. £44 million it could rise to. A disappointing sale, really. Director of Football should have held out for more money than that. Federico DeMarco ends, he's went to today. Transfer deadline day. Chievo came in with a £4.6 million offer. So both of our left wing backs have left the club and it's left us in a bit of a dire strait. DeMarco would have played quite a lot this season despite his diminishing physical stats purely because the guy we've brought in is quite young and he was injured. So we've had to go out in the market and we've signed a backup left wing back who isn't very good. Jovanovic, our backup goalkeeper, joined Manchester United on a free transfer after his contract ran out. Matteo Lenzi, you'd never even seen him. Stanimir Stoichev, who I talked about in the last episode, potentially coming into the first squad uh, if Ponce or Ralevich or Weber left the club. Three of our main strikers, he would have been promoted into their spots, but nobody has left, so he has been loaned out to Schalke for the season. I have included the clause that we can recall him should Ponce, Ralevic or Weber leave in the January transfer window. A couple of other loans, all of our youngsters that are two-star current ability or above have left the club on loan um, just to see if they could improve and get a little bit better with one step closer towards the first team. And that brings us on to the ins, the first of which is the ultimate in panic loaning. Uh, it was done today, it was literally the best option I had. Gonzalo, Gonzalo Alves, he is natural in that left wing back role. He is going to be a backup for us, he'll not be a first team player. But he is going to start today's game, only two star current. Uh, it was the same as what DeMarco was, but DeMarco was definitely a more complete player. He had, does have the better physical stats than DeMarco, but everything else is definitely worse. So I'm going to try and not use him very much. Next up was Simone Piccolo, was signed from Atlanta for £4.2 million. Just a young Italian striker who's went out on loan to Sassuolo. He looks really fantastic for an 18-year-old and I'm hoping that I, I really do see a development path for him into the first-team squad compared to some of our other youngsters. You know, if strikers get sold, obviously Stoichev's next in line. But if Piccolo does well, develops well this season, he could find himself in Stoichev's place next season. Jonathan Uvino, who we did talk about in the last episode, I signed him in preparation for one of our centre midfielders being sold as they were all attracting interest from the bigger clubs in Europe. But none of them have came in. I do have him listed for loan. I'm going to try and get him out get some long game time for the season with an option to be able to recall him just in case anyone gets injured or gets sold but uh it will be a shame if he ends up staying in the first team squad because that would mean he is fourth choice central midfielder and he might not get as much game time as he otherwise might have and that brings us on to the three main signings for this season oscar lopez 25 million pounds by leverkusen 17 years old he is going to be our first choice left wing back he's obviously he's a downgrade on uh, vasilev we'll quickly compare them now so as you can see here a little bit te better technically and aerially but every other area he is a little bit weaker particularly in the physicals than stoichev and uh, not stoichev vasilev uh, his speed is the same defender and stuff but as you can see vasilev was just a better better player but 17 years old, he's got huge potential, this boy, and he is going to be our first choice, so he's going to be playing pretty much every game when he is fit. He's still recovering from a calf strain currently, so £25 million is a little bit too much for a guy of this quality, but considering his potential, it's it's a downgrade at the first 11, but I'm happy with the purchase either way. So that's, that's the first player who were brought in who will be a part of our first 11 the next of which was signed from Everton, a french attack and midfielder udem he will be replacing alternate 
in the first 11 and he just looks absolutely fantastic 19 years old he's worth 51 million pounds already three and a half star current five star potential there's not much you can really complain about this guy great physically mentally he's well rounded same with these technical attributes i'm hoping to get some good performance out of him and we've still got alternate on the bench should he not be performing well so i think that's an upgrade to our first 11 and a definite upgrade to our first 11 considering Saavedra has returned to Manchester United from loan last season was Mark War Marks. Now you'll have seen at the end of last episode I was trying to bid for this guy to unsettle him. Um, Hertha were pretty adamant that they weren't going to let him go for less than the £73 million release fee that he did have. We've managed to get him for 44 uh, eventually he got uh, so sick and tired of us bidding and Hertha not accepting even though I was only bidding ludicrously low amounts. They did eventually come to the negotiating table and £44 million is the price was settled on. Now, he's our best centre-half according to our assistant manager, no doubt about that. And plus, he's only 19 years old, so he is going to improve with that potential that he does have. As you can see here, comparing him to Zango, technically and mentally, he definitely has the better of him in those key areas. Zango is better physically, but that's still got plenty of time to grow for Mark Marks. And I think he was probably the best option in terms of centre-backs that we could have signed, uh, hands down, for the price. £44 million is a lot of money, but for this sort of quality, you've got to play the price. So that is all of our transfer business concluded for this season. There's still a couple of hours left in the transfer window. Hopefully nobody comes in with a late offer for the likes of Ponce or Ralovic or any of our key players. But as you can see, a lot of our best players were wanted this summer. Just the AI just didn't come in for them and I've got to say I'm half glad. So to conclude today's episode, we are going to play the opening game of our season. It is against Torino and this is how we're going to line up. Lazari and goal, Zango and Mark actually... We're going to start with Cruz in goal. Zango and Marks at centre-back. Cafania will replace Ventroni, who's suspended. Patrick at defensive midfield. And Gonzalo Alves will replace Oscar Lopez, who is also injured. Solossi and Pizzullo in the centre. Udem getting his start at attacking midfield. Ralovic and Ponce leading the line. Let's get into it. Torino setting up a bit defensively with the 4-5-1 formation. Andre Silva leading the line there. Zaniolo, I think he's an Italian centre midfielder, who was decent. I think we looked at him earlier maybe about five years ago might have looked at him uh not the best side ever i don't really recognize too many of the names there at home we should get the win and we kick off to start the season shooting from right to left hopefully we get a good performance to set us up nicely in the league the board expects us to win the league again of course they do financially we are looking quite <laughs> unstable i've checked the projections and stuff and we will be making a loss this season if things stay as they are that's why i wasn't too I, I will be bothered, but I wasn't too bothered if the likes of Ponce left as long as it was for big bucks because financially we're not in the best position as that goes over the line from Ralovic, a corner from Solossi. Is that going to be disallowed or VAR? I don't think it is. That, that was a very, very strange goal. I don't know if the goalkeeper got his hand to it or not. Uh, no, I don't think he did. It just ended up going over the line. Fantastic start. But yeah, I'll keep an eye on the fi finances going over the course of the season. We do. We have moved into our new stadium, so we are. I'll be interested to see what the attendance is like for today's game as Ponce plays and Ralovic again gets his second goal of the game already, 25 minutes in, and Ponce with the assist this time. But yeah, we'll check to see what the attendance was. I think it's up to 30,000 seater now compared to 20,000 of previous seasons gone by. Good combination by our two strikers there to get us 2 0 up. Another highlight, 29 minutes in, Ponce on this left-hand side gets a ball in, Solossi, Ralovic. It'll be nice to see Ralovic get his hat-trick, but Udem gets a goal on his debut. An absolutely fantastic strike, and the sort of thing I hope we see a lot of him going forward. Uh, we've always struggled with that attacking midfield role. I thought we'd cracked it last season with Altenaar, but he didn't have the best season last season. I think with Udem, we've definitely taken a big step up in terms of quality and hopefully output. And there we are, half-time, Livorno 3, Torino 0. We've been super clinical. We haven't really dominated this game by any stretch of the imagination, but the three opportunities we have had, we've taken them. 65 minutes in, the game sort of just running away from us here, nothing really too much happening. We will look to get Kyle Wright on, who's struggling, or we'll get Pizzullo off. He's only on 72% conditioning. Gonzalo Alves is going to have to steer out there for the time being. Tell you what, we'll make the double change in the centre midfield. We'll get Jovino on whilst he's still at the club, trying to get him game time as much as possible. Uh, I don't want to stunt his development. He's 20 years old. He's still got room to improve. So hopefully we can get him that lone game time out over the season. Our squad will be quite thin if he does leave, but I think we'll be able to manage. We've still got some players in the under-20s 
who could be promoted in case of emergency. We'll finally get our first highlight of the second half. The game has just sort of ticked away 3 nil up. Obviously, we're not taking it to them as much as we were. But hopefully, we might get our fourth goal here. As Carl Wright picks it up in the centre to Alves on this left-hand side. Decent cross in. Ralovic is there. It's fell to Ponce. Ponce gets his first goal of the season. Opens his account after scoring 40 goals last season. A same from him will be absolutely fantastic. And hopefully, a few more goals from Ralovic as well. Alves, our backup left-back, doing well to get the cross in. Ralovic with the head down. Uh, I don't know how Ponce has hit that. The, there was no animation. He didn't knee it or kick it or head it. But we'll take it. 4-0. And this will be the final highlight of the game. There we are. Full time. Livorno 4. Torino 0. Torino no mugs. I think they finished uh, in the top half last season. Or so to get the opening day win. Ralovic having a superb game. Two goals, two assists. Is a fantastic, fantastic start. And there we are, we can see the attendance for the Torino game was 30,695, our stadium capacity is 30,999, so pretty much a sellout there. Um, that needs to make a big difference to our finances, because I'll just quickly show you, we're on 11 million to start this season, uh, we'll look at last season, we're on 56 million to start that season, and we quickly diminished all the way down towards the back end of last season at around 14 million, so at, a, at, at 11 million now, we will quickly go down our projection for the end of the season is minus £20 million. Pounds. We're just spending too much on our wage budget, really. So we are still in the January transfer window. I'll quickly play through the rest just to make sure nobody comes in for Pons puts on a show for Man City. He's, they've been watching them all summer. They've never even made a derisory offer. £100 million, pounds, their media reckons will get them, and they're probably right. No clubs coming in for your Vino on loan. It looks like you will be staying in the squad. We'll look to get as much uh, game time for him as possible. It is going to be difficult with the likes of Kyle Wright and Solossi sitting on the bench who are just better players. And that is the end of the transfer window for Italy. We can still get offers from other nations whose transfer windows have shut. But hopefully our director of football is sensible enough to be able to reject them and not accept any when we can't replace them. And there we are, there's the record attendance broken by Livorno. Our previous record was 18,785, so we've, you know, 12,000 extra people in the stadium compared to our record attendance is obviously fantastic. Looking forward to the next episode, it will be the opening game of the Champions League after the group stage draw has been done. We've got Cagliari, Roma and Fiorentina, uh, games in the league in between. Roma and Cagliari are away from home, so we'll see how things are standing at the end of that. If you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.